way, <laughs> 10 miles. We've been yeah. walking for hours so, trying to get internet. Now? No, that's the theme. That's the theme. The theme is democracy now. Free Hong Kong democracy now. And it's uh, put on by the Civil Human Rights Front. The Civil Human Rights Front, that's right. Um, yeah, today's been a really, it's been quite a day. Uh, as you may or may not know, the G20 summit is coming up this Friday and Saturday in Osaka, Japan. And uh, the Chinese Communist Party has made it very clear that they don't want any other countries to bring up the Hong Kong issue during it. Because it's an international event and Hong Kong is an internal affair of China. Uh, needless to say, I don't think any country around the world would be too happy about being ordered what to talk about by the Chinese Communist Party. See to deliver uh, these letters asking these countries to uh, bring up Hong Kong uh, during the G20 and pointing out that the situation in Hong Kong is really an international issue. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm just trying to turn on my YouTubes and see if I can see your uh, comments. We're having internet, lots of internet troubles. If you're just joining us, we're having a lot of internet troubles. Yeah, it turns out that when you have, like, several thousand people together in a small square, the internet just goes out. And then realized as we were looking into the square, we were like standing back uh, in the back of the crowd and trying to get further and further away, uh, that uh, there's actually a parking structure right next to the square where the protest is being held. And all three levels of the parking structure were also full of people. So it's a little uh, crowded over there. We're trying to walk back towards that area right now and hopefully it will work. Uh, the issue we're having now though is we can't, now we can't connect to YouTube so we can't see your comments. So it might be better to just go back. Well, we'll I'll tell you what, we'll take you close so you can kind of get an idea of what the protests look like. Oh hey, Shelly's got it. Great. Let us know if uh, it's laggy or you can't uh, hear us or something. Green light. Um, so, Shelley, where were you in the story? I kind of missed it. Oh, we were talking about uh, them going to all these different consulates to get their deliver letters about the G20. Yeah, in Hong Kong. they were going to 19 of the 20 G20 consulates. They didn't really feel the need to go to China's for some quality reason. Quality is low, laggy. Quality is low, laggy. Uh, hmm. How many people are still protesting? I mean, there's more than 5,000 people in that square, definitely. <clears throat> Definitely more than 10. Definitely more than 10 people, he means. 10 people, yeah. yeah. So there's been this ongoing joke we've been having that uh, uh, Carrie Lam and the Hong Kong chief executive, Carrie Lam, and the police have constantly lowballed the number of people at these events. So, uh, yes, there's definitely more than. Oh, we're live. There's a, day, there's a dead snail. Uh, so. It's not tracking, Matt. The gimbal is not tracking us. All right. Uh, yeah, sorry about all the technical difficulties. This is definitely the best live we've ever done. Do you have a comments back up, Shelley? Uh, no. Okay. Well, so I'm sorry we've abandoned going back to the protest site because every time we do, all of our cell phones shut down. And what did people do in the old days when they tried to do live? Um, I so blame the People's Liberation Army. Yes, you can see it behind us. It's that nice tall building there. At one point we thought we were going to go live in front of the People's Liberation Army, and then we realized that the gates were opening. And a busload of soldiers were coming out. Yeah, the bus may have been mostly empty. I like to imagine it was mostly full. We I barely got out of there in the nick of time. I didn't really see a lot of soldiers. but uh, The windows were tinted, but I saw on through the front window, the driver's window. And I could see in the back, row after row of soldiers, uh -huh. teeth uh -huh. gleaming, gun uh -huh. barrels uh -huh. sparkling. Yeah, that's why I saw empty seats. Uh, yes. Shelly doesn't know what she's talking about. She's uh, petrified with fear. Yeah, well, I tried to take a photo of the propaganda billboard outside the front of the People's Liberation Army and then realized there was a soldier there. So that was fun. Yeah. Uh, so is that up? So we're going to just give a rundown of some things that have happened today and the G20, and then we're going to answer a bunch of questions, assuming we can get this up. I can feel the mosquitoes okay. coming to suck our blood. Uh, so uh, I think we've gotten through most of the story about the protesters today, but basically they were going from 
consulate to consulate of the G20 countries, except for China, uh, asking them to raise the issue of Hong Kong at the G20 this weekend. Um, there was, uh, my favorite part was the shirts that said liberate Hong Kong. Like they were passing out t-shirts that said liberate Hong Kong. On Why them. was that your favorite part? Oh, because I felt like the CCP would really enjoy those shirts. Because they were talking about the People's Liberation Army? Uh, you know, that's up for interpretation. Hey, awesome. We got our things back. Um, oh, also there was this interesting story. Uh, protesters have been raising money so they could get uh, ads published on the front page of major international newspapers. And so they were going for 3 million Hong Kong dollars? Yes, so they wanted 3 million Hong Kong dollars so they could put full-page ads in, like, the New York Times, the Financial Times, Globe and Mail, like, these big kind of media in other countries, uh, uh, several in Japan where the G20 is going to be, Taiwan, all these places. And then... uh, They were going for 3 million. They were going for 3 million. And then within 12 hours, they got 6.7 million and had to shut it down because they were getting too many donations. I wish that was a problem we had. Yeah, right. But yeah, it was uh, pretty incredible to see uh, that kind of thing happen because they were like, all right, we're going to put this up. And then within three hours, they had almost the whole thing. And then within like another yeah. hour, it was like, oh, we're, we've reached it. And then they kept going. Yeah. yeah. So the big question on everyone's mind is how the G20 countries, particularly the United States and Trump, are going to bring up uh, Hong Kong during the G20 summit um, this Friday and Saturday. Uh, we'll probably we'll try and cover that as as we can. Um, so let's see. Oh, we got. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, I guess we'll start answering some questions now, unless there's something else you felt we needed to talk about, Shelley. Things have been good for us here in Hong Kong. We've just been working on episodes. We have some really good interviews coming out pretty soon. Oh, uh, yeah, we have an interview that's going to come out this afternoon, uh, New York time. That's uh, pretty interesting. <gasps> there's a cat. Sorry, guys. More important, there's a cat. She just tried to meow, you know. Anyway, it's a tabby, less so we're important. safe. Okay. Wait, why would we be safe if it's tabby? Uh, as opposed to a black cat. I mean. What if it's a black tabby? That's not a possible combination. It's not. No. Um, oh. Oh yeah, Emily Lau. A great interview coming out this afternoon. Uh, she's considered Hong Kong's Iron Lady. Uh, she she gave a great interview. Um, yeah, really struck to the heart of a lot of what's happening in Hong Kong. Definitely check it out. It'll be awesome. All right, so, uh, questions. Let's pick up that one there. Oh, Momo Hall just donated $14.99. No question. Just thank you very much. Uh, Okay. Uh, Norman Jacks, $2.99 Australian. Keep up the good work. Thanks. All right, let's see. What else do we have? Kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh, Uh, people are calling for the kitty. The kitty can't hear you. He's running away from PLA soldiers. Somebody asked what we think will happen by when one country, two systems expires. We actually had an interesting conversation with a, uh, we interviewed this guy, Sonny Lowe, who is mm. a expert on the United Front work in Hong Kong. And he actually had an interesting take on it. You want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. His basic thing was uh, the Chinese Communist Party's goal is to sort of on the surface maintain the one country, two systems policy because that's kind of how they want to snag in Taiwan. So ideally what they want is to, on the surface, have one country, two systems. Meanwhile, using the United Front and other business ties, subvert Hong Kong society so the pro-Beijing faction inside of Hong Kong basically has so much power, no other alternative can hold any sway. So essentially, even though on the surface it's one country, two system, Beijing controls everything. Well, and his thing was he thought that they would just keep indefinitely pushing out one country, two systems, which is actually an analysis I hadn't heard before. Yeah, the past 2047, when it's officially supposed to end, they would keep going. And uh, and again, the target with this would be Taiwan, to give Taiwan this sort of option, like, you can uh, reunite with the motherland and get to keep your freedoms, just the way Hong Kong gets to keep all of its freedoms. Uh, but I personally agree with the derpy kitty who says, LOL, China's not going to live to 2047. Well, I think China will, but I don't think the Communist Party will survive to 2047. Why don't you get that one? Okay, Andrew Jones donated $20 Australian and said, keep up the good work, guys. The world needs you. Thank I, you. I think he was talking to me. Uh, because you're a guy? No, why would, I, why would that be an issue? It's just... Because he said guys. I, all right. Guys? He said guys? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, you should also check out um, 
Uh, the China Uncensored Instagram and uh, Shelly's Twitter account at S H E L Z H A N G, Shell Jong. Uh, I feel like that was challenging your spelling abilities. For no, something. I'm doing it slowly so people can type it down. Okay. Uh, yesterday we had a wonderful day where we went to uh, a place called the Ten Thousand Buddha Monastery. This guy in the 50s, I guess he was like a tycoon. No, no, he was also uh, uh, like a monk or something. Uh, he built this monastery and filled it with like over 10,000 golden Buddha statues. Well, it was quite a trip. Was, and there was monkeys. Was scary. And also his body is inside the temple, which is... Yeah, supposedly his, never, his incorruptible body is like still there. Um, and you can, you can see it. He had like robes and a golden mask on, so you can see really it's not like looking at a mummy or mao's mausoleum shelly was totally freaked out though she wouldn't get near it yeah no not a fan um okay uh given a sigouring donated five dollars canadian thank, thank you. you and the channel the gi joe show cool donate hong kong fifty dollars thank you I am for peaceful marches like those which drew millions of concerned Hong Kongers, but I'm totally against violent protesters disrupting life for others. I also condemn, condemn police brutality. Well, that's an interesting point. Um, some of the people we were talking here, I can't remember who it was, but mentioned like one of the strategic flaws of the Umbrella Movement uh, in 2014 was that just because they had occupied uh, the highways for 79 days, it kind of irritated a lot of your average a Hong Kongers who just couldn't make their way through the center of the city. Um, which is also one of the differences of the protests this time is that such a large uh, portion of Hong Kong society, not just like people, not just students or teachers or, you know, your activists, there was a lot of mainstream. I think you Hong can Kong see society. that also from the fact that they reached their donation, like for the, yeah. for the uh, advertising so quickly, because a lot of people can't participate in these protests. Like mm -hmm. now it's after work. So there's like tons of people in the, in the square behind us that we cannot go to for internet reasons. But, you know, today during the day, there are only like, you know, a thousand plus people going to all these different uh, consulates, which, by the way, was more than enough because they were basically shutting down both sides of the sidewalk. In yeah, the, it was yeah. a little nuts. Um, um, yeah, for those of us, for those of you just joining, uh, we were going to do a live from a, a big rally they're having over that way with definitely over a thousand people. Several, there's several, several thousand. Let's say there. several thousand people, but uh, unfortunately, the internet does not work there. So we are here. So, uh, where are we? Ashwin donated five ninety nine Australian. Thank you, and asked how long do you think the protests will continue? That's a big question. Well, I think what's what Chris you started getting at was the idea that these protests are different than the Occupy Central umbrella movement, where they're not just going to like kind of stake out a piece of land and try to hold it. Mm -hmm. They're kind of just they're doing these like kind of guerrilla um, protest tactics. Where Bruce Lee, Bruce be Lee. like water. That has become a motto of the protest, actually, to flow and be like water. Yeah, so they've, um, they're kind of trying to be more, like, adaptable, and, like, they, there are sometimes, like, small protests where only a few hundred people show up, and then there are larger protests where, you know, thousands of people will come, like, the rally behind us. And, of course, uh, the July 1st protests, which are coming up next Monday, which is the traditional um, you know, celebration of when the handover from the Hong Kong was handed over from the UK to China. So usually there's a big protest that day. Yeah, and so everyone's expecting this year to be exceptionally large. Uh, what happens after that? That's kind of everyone's guess. Uh, I've heard some people say like, you know, July 1st is only the beginning. You guys should really stick around a couple weeks more. Um. And uh, we miss Oh my gosh, I miss New York. I never thought I'd say that. Um, but, yeah, so it's hard to say what is going to happen. I mean, the fundamental problem is Hong Kong can never truly have the freedoms it wants as long as the Chinese Communist Party is in charge. And Yeah, the system doesn't really work, does it? Like, the, the strain between yeah. the, the place that has rule of law and personal freedoms and... Mm -hmm like, uh, you know, semi-democracy, yeah. we can say, and the authoritarian one-party state yeah. is not, yeah. Actually, as it stands now, 
uh, basically protests have become institutionalized in Hong Kong society. It's the only way people really have to engage with the government. Uh, I mean, there, they can, you know, there are elections, and one of the big things the protesters are trying to do is uh, register people to vote. Actually, mm -hmm. we keep seeing people registering, protesters registering people to vote because the uh, July 2nd is the cutoff date for the next elections. Which is in November. Yes. So but, the, the, they can vote, but because of all the disqualifications of the legislators that have been happening, and they're trying to, I, even they stopped people from being able to run at all. Mm -hmm. Like first they were disqualifying people who had already been elected, and then they started, like remember Agnes Chow, mm -hmm. who, like where she was trying to run for Demis uh, Sisto uh, to run for a seat in the legislature, and they basically did not let her run. Yeah, so, basically the way the legislative council works is there's like a chunk of it that's guaranteed to, I think, functional functional constituencies, I believe is what it's called, which is basically already kind of pro-Beijing. They're like special interest groups. Yeah, of which most are pro-Beijing. And then there's like another half that is like people can actually run for and vote for. Mm -hmm. And so that... On paper, that is a way that like pro-democracy people could have control over the government. The reality is, as Shelley was saying, they've disqualified legislature that have been elected. They have been barring people from running. So basically, they're gaming the system. So that it's very difficult for pro-democracy forces to actually uh, have power in the government. And so that's why when people feel like they have no say in any form of the government, all they can do is protest. So that kind of goes back to when will the protests end? As long as this is a situation, protests are never going to end because, as it is, this is the only way people can have a say. Uh, and I think the government has kind of inadvertently taught them now that these, it's effective. It's effective. They've been able to shut down parts of the government for, like, they shut down the legislative council for several days with these protests. They've set, shut down the executive council, which is um, Carrie Lam, the chief executive, is in charge of. So they haven't met for, she hasn't been seen in like over, like a week. She's probably I sad think, somewhere. And I think her last press conference was last Tuesday. So uh, the government just has kind of not been responding. <laughs> so uh, They also occupied the, the police HQ. So Yes, our last... No, two live streams ago, we did it from Those the are two live yes, okay, uh, police headquarters. So, Ugh. I mean, the latest thing with the police thing is that there's been some uh, controversy with the hospitals because people were being arrested when they were being treated for injuries at the hospitals, and so some of the people in the the medical sectors were upset about that and were like, uh, you know, starting to like make the protest and things like that and the police today pulled out of two hospitals that they had kind of like they had police staff at the hospitals just in case anything would happen to the hospital and they kind of like pulled out because they were like well if you're going to criticize us we don't want to be here it was very very mature and one of the things i mentioned we have an upcoming interview coming out with emily Lau. one thing she said is pointed out is that the relationship between the hong kong people and the hong kong police has, for most of Hong Kong's history, been really good. You know, Hong Kong is a safe city. Uh, the police are, have been seen as generally being friendly and on the side of people, but now that relationship has been very tarnished. Let's we, see. Let's, let's, let's go some more questions. Uh, I'm taking a step forward. Uh, million dollars donated $20. Um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And said, end the CCP now, freedom now. Yeah. We're working on it. Uh, okay. I say as I'm in front of the PLA garrison. Aaron M. donated 50 Hong Kong dollars. Thank you. What do you guys think of the pol the police, police Facebook post post misspeaking the policies of police when it comes to the hospital investigation people? I'm not familiar with this. Are you, Shelley? Uh, I didn't see that particular Facebook post. So I guess we're going to have to look into that later. Uh, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Oh, oh. no. We lost somebody. I'm sorry. Somebody, somebody do donated $5 yeah. and it just went off my screen. Great. So thank you to that person. Uh, Lucien Levesque donated $5 Canadian said learn to learn who rolls over you learn who you're not allowed to criticize always trust yourself and do what you think is best follow your dreams. Well that was inspiration. Yeah I'm not allowed to criticize Shelley <laughs> FYI. Uh, okay uh, Josiah O'Neill donated $5 New Zealand. What will happen when the CCP is gone and how will it go? 
That is definitely a million dollar question. Uh, or five dollar question. Or five dollar question. Easy. So the Chinese Communist Party likes to say if it ever goes, then you know China will descend into chaos and barbarism, the likes of which has never been seen. I actually think China will be completely fine uh, and it will be a very stable transition. How things will go for places like Taiwan or Tibet or Xinjiang, uh, that's a little harder to tell. Maybe they'll still be a part of whatever the next incarnation of China is. Maybe they won't, um, but you know, I think that will be... The point is, once the Communist Party is gone, those decisions can be made in a more peaceful, rational, human way. Okay. I think I found the, the question that got erased. A million oh, okay. dollars donated five dollars and said, is it true that Hong Kong have undercover Chinese spooks spying on people? Ooh, that sounds scary. Ghosts. Uh, are there spies in Hong Kong? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what you might be getting at is, so on June 12th, Wednesday night, that was when uh, the police cracked down very hard on protesters. And uh, what some people have said is that they noticed that the Hong Kong, pol like the police, their police badges with their identifying numbers were covered up. So people weren't sure who they were. And so there's rumors going around that, oh, maybe these were like some elite Hong Kong police force, or maybe these were police that were trained in mainland China, or maybe uh, they were PLA soldiers. Yeah, there's no, there's no proof that, of any, that they were yeah. soldiers, by the way. But, um, you know, the police kind of came out and said that there's no room on the uniforms for, of this, these police for the numbers. And yeah, then, I mean, so they were just carrying too many cans of tear gas, so there's no room for identification. Well, they, I mean, that's not what they said, but they did say there was no room for the numbers on the uniforms, so people started mocking them by showing, like, uh, photos of, like, bikini-clad, like, uh, you know, uh, beauty pageants, mm -hmm. so, uh, and how they're, even on a bikini, there's room to put, like, a number on it and stuff like that. Thank so goodness were, for those brave netizens who researched that. Yes, yes, okay. And to be fair, there were also guy versions and girl versions, so it was, you know... Guy bikinis? Like uh, Speedos. Oh, man bikinis. Uh, so, uh, let's see, somebody else? Uh, Sagis Aries donated $2 Canadian asked, is war more likely due to the escalation of protests? Um, no, I don't think so. What do you think? I would say it's less likely just because there's now so much international attention here. Uh, like, when Shelly and I, and Matt, thank you, Matt, for doing all the behind the camera work uh when we first got here we were a little nervous what was going on but in general it seems like gosh they'd be so stupid to do anything i think at this point the the public kind of rage at the police is pretty high and uh they're just not willing to kind of trigger more public outrage right I think now the, yeah the biggest concern is that maybe like a year from now or two years from now you'll start seeing the government like arresting people who are involved with this, charging them with public nuisance or rioting, kind of what you saw with some of the umbrella people. Um, I am sweating like a pig. Koala1203 asks, uh, donate $5, thank you, and asks, what is the reaction from Macau in regards to the anti-extradition protests here? That's a good question. I have no idea. Uh, Macau um, is definitely much more controlled than Hong Kong. Yeah, we haven't really looked at the reaction from Macau. Um, a few years ago, we did go to Macau. Last time we were in Hong Kong and Macau, 2016, and talked to a democracy activist there who was basically like, people in Macau don't care as much, at least visibly, because the the when the CCP came in, they basically... Uh, made the economy so much better that a lot of people are making money from mainland Chinese tourists and things like that and they feel like they can't really disrupt their like economy yeah. for yeah and as a comparison um, there is this like uh, sketchy scary national security bill called article 23 that they tried to pass in Hong Kong and when they tried to do that this was like in 2003 or something there was like Half a million people came onto the streets to protest that. A few years later in Macau, it just passed. There was no problem. Yeah. So that's sort of a little microcosm of the difference between Hong Kong and Macau. Also um, egg tarts. Oh, yes. The Portuguese egg tarts are amazing. Mm. Um, K. Lam donated 100 Hong Kong dollars. Awesome. And Thank said, you. said, the Hong Kong police force had a tantrum today in the hospitals by skipping their duty in the emergency rooms. Yes, that's what we were trying to get at earlier, where they were upset that the hospital staff were upset at them so they decide to leave yeah and in general like i i typically do support police like they have a hard job and they do 
you know, protect society, but, like, the Hong Kong police have dug themselves a hole. Yeah, I mean, do we want to talk about the condom thing? No. No, okay. Well, the basically, there's a slang term um, in Hong Kong that means, like, kind of like somebody's being thrown away after a single use or, like, like thrown under the bus. I'm sure kind you of. can imagine what the common yeah, thing is. Yeah, but uh, they uh, they basically were talking about how even like the protesters were saying the police were being kind of used thrown under up. the bus. Yeah. Uh, used up by the Hong Kong government. Yeah, so. like, yeah, Carrie Lam is basically saying, like, oh, it was the police well, decision like, to yes, do all this. Yes, like, we, I agree with the police commissioner, and then the police commissioner was like, it's the police officers at, at the, the scene, scene who did it. Yeah, who made these decisions, so I support that. Which seemed them. to be, like, uh, these uh, leftover white uh, police officers who, who seem like their sole purpose in life is to be ranked high enough that they can get all the blame for everything, but not so they're ever in a position of decision-making. Uh, there's a lot of anger at a particular couple of, uh, of um, police op- white police officers who were kind of making the, the orders to use the tear gas and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to hand the microphone to Shelly real quick. I'm going to step off camera and wipe myself. I'm sweating so much. Okay, well... Um, so there, we have two questions, one from Phil C. and one from, who donated $5 Australia, thank you, and one from The Gaunch, who donated a $25 Hong Kong. This is the same question, how long are you guys planning to stay in Hong Kong, and will you guys stay for the July 1st protest? We're here forever now. What? <laughs> you didn't tell me this, Shelley. Yeah, Matt and I decided earlier, we decided oh, to man. break it to forever? you live, live, where you couldn't, you know, oh, do God. anything about it. No, we are, we are staying for the July 1st protest. Yes, because that's going to be awesome. Uh, what happened was when, her, we were, when we got here, we bought one-way tickets, and we we're like, "All right, we'll be here probably for like a week." It's a couple days. Yeah. Week. And then we're like, "Oh, probably it's it's we missed the fun and exciting part, yeah. you know? Uh, probably there won't be as big of a protest as there was last week, and then two million people showed up." And we're like, "Oh, let's stick around." Yeah, we we're like, "Okay, we better we better stay around." And then they, you know, occupied the police headquarters, and we're like, "All right, we better stick around a little longer." And then we're like, "All right, we might as well just stay." Yeah, and we also discovered that like the McDonald's here is really good. Like I'm, I'm actually digging McDonald's. It's pretty good. They have I these think, Angus burgers. I'm just buying time for you to find the next question. Uh, poor Chris, a, he's like, this uh, is, this yeah. Is, this and there's is, this one place that has like this sea salt Okinawan soft serve. Oh man, that's been great. Hey, show you found a question. Anthony Finches. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, donated twenty dollars Canadian. Thank you and said, uh, you guys rock, keep up the good work. I've been watching China Uncensored for quite some time. Love what you guys are doing. You guys are the hammer that brings down the Chinese Iron Curtain. Nice. So maybe like, Shelly's the hammer, I'm the sickle, taking down (laughs) communism. (laughs) I like that. Let's remember that. Guys, help me remember that. We could do something with that. Maybe make t-shirts. Oh, and a helicopter. Civilian helicopter. Nothing to worry about. Um... Matt the Ginger. Hi, Matt the Ginger. Oh, hello again. <laughs> Sounds kind of adorable. Um, uh, donated $5 New Zealand, and thank you, and said, a lot, lot of immigration stories Hong Kongers looking to leave in the media lately. Do you think this will become a thing? They're welcome in New Zealand. Well, that was an thing. Yeah, it is a thing. <laughs> I yeah. mean, th- this is not the first time. Like, we've talked before on, I think, our live streams and some of our episodes about how the uh, uh, there was where people voting with their feet and leaving with Hong Kong before the 97 handover because they were worried. Yeah, it's happened periodically. Like after the Tiananmen Square massacre, this was when Hong Kongers knew they were going to go back to China. A lot of people were like, yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, and I remember being in Toronto for the in 96 or something like that and being like, oh my gosh, there are so many people from Hong Kong here. And mm-hmm. um, it was, you know, just people leaving prior to the handover. And yeah. now... There's definitely well, like, at like after the handover in like the early 2000s, it was, people were kind of like, okay, things are not actually things so are okay. A lot of people okay. came back. A lot of people came back, and a lot of people just kind of stayed. Um, but now, like it's There's, definitely like a mass exodus. Well, well, I mean, relatively mass. I don't know the numbers, but people are leaving now. People, are, it's become a big uh, problem, and also a lot of people are upset because while there are a lot of people who have 
dual citizenship with another uh, country and have like a Canadian passport or a UK passport or something that they can use to leave the country, uh, a lot of people don't. Yeah. A lot of like ordinary Hong Kongers just don't have anywhere to go. So they really feel like they're fighting for their lives here. Like they can't go anywhere else. They don't have that option mm -hmm. as easily as some of the more like uh, yeah. upper middle class or like elite people do. I mean, a lot of the anger against Carrie Lam was partly because when she talked about how she was a mother and like she, you know, that, that's how she felt about Hong Kong, like as her son, like she would have to discipline her son and whatever. And people were like, your sons have UK passports. Yeah. They don't have to live here. And it kind of ties into a lot of the economic issues in Hong Kong. So there's a huge wealth gap in Hong Kong. Uh, and so a lot of the reason that you see so many young people out on the streets is that they feel they have no future in the city. They're stuck here, but you know, I heard a statistic that the average Hong Kong apartment costs like 70% of a person's income. So it's hard to find a place to live. There are less and less job opportunities. They feel stuck. And so that's why they're really coming out in force because they feel like if they don't fight now, they have no future. All right. Step or take up so far. Okay. All so right. What do we have? Um, uh, actually, got Hey, I'm glad somebody says that's MR Penguin to you. Got a notification. That's good. This is, oh, so this is something. Um, we know a lot of people have been saying like they've been mysteriously unsubscribed to the to China Uncensored or not getting notifications about things. So, uh, what we're going to start doing now is making a big so push. Saying the lab mic's buzzing. Oh, there's a buzzing, 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 buzz, buzz. Um, is that fixed? So basically, we're going to always be asking you guys to you know help share these videos tell your friends and family about static it static at the mic static still static better Does better okay better so yeah please uh yeah youtube is doing no, weird it's things back. Okay. it's back yes it's fixed oh it's my fixed. god this is so confusing oh you're tearing me apart uh buzz buzz lots of buzz so chris check the connection static has been the whole time ah it's back back buzz Guys, make up your mind. Is it fixed or wanna, is it not? Is it just your voice? My my, what are you saying about my voice, Shelley? Uh, Bad connection. Get new lab. Thank, love you. Okay. Thank you, Luke. All right. Uh, Matt's playing with it. Uh, maybe it'll work. Um, but can you? All right. So yes, please share the videos and the show with friends and family. I think that's the point. Oh, some people are not so camera shy in back of us. Okay, what do we have? It's oh. pronounced Ties. Ties. Anthony, thank you for oh. donating another $2 so you could correct my pronunciation of your name. <laughs> I knew how it was pronounced. I just didn't want to you know, yeah, embarrass Shelly. Yeah, he didn't want to. I'm not allowed to criticize Shelly on the show, so you know well, who's in yeah, charge. Well, you, you can. It just would make you look like a terrible person. Uh, I think somebody who is not able to accept constructive criticism looks terrible. I didn't say you couldn't. Hey, criticize. somebody <laughs> donated something. $20. That was from before. Oh, Sorry. that was from before. You're not being saved. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, feel free to ask us a question, guys. We're, we're, we're here for now. We want to wanna answer it's some things. Maybe Mike and Matt could put his hand on the mic plug to conduct the static electricity to the ground. What? I Matt is not magic. Take it's the very capable. Further away from the phone. Fortunately, this is a small. It's it's not. Uh, yes. It's a short cord, so we're about as far away as we can get. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, we've been trying to upgrade our live capabilities since we've been here. Hong Kong was basically the first time we've done a live. Um, uh, what? What am I holding? This is so this. cute. Oh, I'm holding this. Yeah. And now I'm gonna adjust the mic. I am in control of the camera now. This is somebody, Whoa. Avinav Swami says, Chris B and Shelly B. That's kind of adorable. I like that. Uh, but yeah, we've been trying to upgrade our uh, live setup. So we bought a gimbal, which is basically a device that holds the, uh, the iPhone that we're using steady, which actually really came in handy on our last live when we were at a sort of in-the-moment protest that was occupying the immigration tower we were walking around with that and kept it nice and smooth we obviously need to upgrade our uh, microphone sound situation so we'll we'll get there 
Rub Rub asks, do you think Hong Kong has any chance to oppose the bill? I mean, they are actually doing a way better job than it seemed like was going to. I mean, two weeks ago, it looked like even if they came out and protested, there was no, the government was just going to like ram it through. Yeah. However, uh, like you, I've been seeing a lot of media say like, oh, the extradition bill is dead. That's not quite accurate. Like even today we saw how the Chinese Communist Party is still throwing support behind the extradition bill. Well, they were saying, like, we, you know, the foreign ministry spokesperson was saying, like, we support the Hong Kong government, uh, you know, it's a good bill. Like, uh, you know, 800,000 Hong Kongers support it, and the number is growing every day. And how did, how did they get that number? So there was a petition that's, like, there are pro-CCP groups in Hong Kong, and the colloquially people call them the Blue Ribbons. So they uh, occasionally do these, like, petition drives and things like that where they claim that they had 800,000 people sign petitions that uh, supported them. the bills. Yes, definitely. Yes. So, you know, as Carrie Lam says, the bill is postponed, possibly indefinitely. She Actually, she's never said indefinitely. Um, so well, she, she kind of was like, well, if it doesn't get voted on by next July, it's dead. And that's why people were like, I think she's just telling people now to keep protesting until next July. <laughs> she just Hey, we should be here till next July. She's not good at messaging, I gotta say. No. But um the <laughs> the the today the, or yesterday the foreign ministry spokesperson, the the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson was like, Oh, so there are eight hundred thousand people who support the uh, extradition bill and people have said that there are one million people who you know marched against it but the Hong Kong government gave a number that was much lower than a million people uh, I don't really want to get into the details right now but also you know can you really use the number of people as an indicator of whether people support something or not I don't think so it's a very good point from the Chinese ministry spokesman yeah um, so you can see why people are still very concerned that this extradition bill is not a done issue are they still protesting in Hong Kong? I mean, right now, yeah. like, literally behind us? Yes, we can hear them. Um, yeah, yeah, there's they're... several thousand people over there protesting. If you're just joining us, we tried to do the live from there, but the internet didn't work. So we are now... Like, like 10 minutes we, we are quite yeah. We're quite a distance away. We, we can kind of hear it in the background. I'm sure you guys can. But, um, yeah, so the protests are still happening. There were protests earlier today. Uh, and we're making a video about that, which will be out soon. Uh, David Tran donated ten ten dollars. Oh, thank you. you. Um, Jack Leon donated a hundred dollars Hong Kong and said, uh, "Thank you. Help Hong Kong support freedom, support China uncensored." Thank you. We should we should have that as a slogan. That's good. Steve donated six dollars and says, "I hope Trump Ro trolls trolls." Okay, uh, Xi Jinping about the protests during the G20 summit. I hope so too. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be. Uh, something that comes up, doesn't come up, or it'll be behind closed doors, and we never really know what happens, but I don't know. Um, we'll find out soon. Aaron M. donated 50 Hong Kong dollars and said, Most of the petitions are fake bots, or they go into old-age homes that are run by pro-CCP groups. They also commit voter fraud by busing these old people to pose polls with the number of the candidate on their hand. How dare you accuse the Chinese Communist Party of lying like that? I mean... That's just absurd. And anyways, you can't use the number of people who like something as an indicator of whether or not people like something. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, Lucas the Human says, thank you so much for staying until July 1st. And um, Mio Nguyen Second says, please stay until G20 Summit. We are staying till July 1st, so we are definitely going to be here through all this. Uh, Oni Chad says, hey, China Uncensored, is it safe to travel there? Is there Hong Kong? If there is Hong Kong, it is safe to travel here. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. if we if they let us in, can't be too bad. Uh, Hopefully they'll let us out. Uh, it's uh, totally safe. Yeah, there's not... Actually, it is one of the safest cities in the world, just in terms of, like, general safety and security. Uh, yeah, it's pretty... I, like, I do love the city of Hong Kong. It's amazing. It's, like, it's the city of the future. Uh, so... If you have the ability, come to Hong Kong. It's great. Somebody says, Wild Bill 1989 says, Thank you for your hard work. I hope to visit Hong Kong someday soon. And hopefully not a Hong Kong ruled by the PRC, but a free Hong Kong. You are awesome. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Chris and Shelley, I love you. That's the Hi There Guys TV. Uh, that's a good opinion to have. In fact, it's a fact. Uh, let's see. Dark Hooded Slayer says, Hello. Hello. 
ARNM says Hong Kong is generally pretty safe, but there are still some spots not to go to late at night. That is true. Um, unfortunately, I forget the name of that place. But as I said, there is a big wealth gap in Hong Kong, so there are some places that are not. Uh, well, like I, I have a friend here, and like they got their wallet stolen, or like she got her wallet stolen out of her purse or something. So like it seems like that's kind of the level of crime, but you know, it's not. Uh, it's, not like Washington, D.C., I guess. Uh, Phil C. donated five Australian dollars. Thank you. And says, it's Phil again. Hi, Phil. Hey, Phil. Chris, you look really sweaty. Is it really hot in Hong Kong? Please take care of yourself and the team. Cheers. It's it's quite humid. Uh, I'm very glad I'm not wearing a jacket right now because it'd be ruined. It's very hot. It's, you know, Fahrenheit's in the 90s. Celsius is in the 30s. And it's just, like... What, like though yeah there's so much humidity in the air um and it's you know it's kind of monsoon season ish so there's rainstorms off and on but um you know maybe we can convince the protesters next time to protest in like november or in a mall yes or in a mall that's that was been, that's been my thing to see if we can convince them to protest inside where there's air conditioning i guess i'm gonna have to replenish after this with one of those mcdonald's sea salt okinawa soft serves are you trying to get sponsorship for mcdonald's because i feel like that's what's happening i just want to be able to eat those even when i'm not in hong kong oh that's true we were so when we were here for the umbrella movement in 2014 we, we kind of fell in love with mcdonald's had these like deep fried taro pies which are like the apple pies but they had taro in them instead they're so and good i don't know if it was just because we were sleep deprived and whatever but we decided these were the best things ever and then we never found them again in hong kong it's tragic it's tragic people told us they were in shenzhen across the border in oh. china oh so close yet so far <laughs> um fabricio urbano Corna cornaglia I need to give you the hard names from now on. Um, donated ARS50, thank you, and said, keep covering this. Greetings from Argentina. Oh, Ooh. thank you. Thank you. Um, South America tour, Shelly? Well, <coughs> South and Central. I think we should go to South America on our way to an Antarctica. Oh, yeah, we do want to go to Antarctica someday. See, uh, you know, all the Lovecraftian horrors that are in the uh, ice caps. And the... Uh, you Mountains know. of madness. Actually, China is trying to claim parts of Antarctica. I think we've done a few episodes about that. So. That's true. Yeah. They're also trying to claim they're a near Arctic state, so they're trying to claim the North Pole, too. I mean, Santa is red. <laughs> she liked that. <laughs> um, would have preferred to see Chris in a Hawaiian shirt. Chris, have you ever worn a Hawaiian shirt? Uh, when I was a kid, I did go to Hawaii with my parents, and I bought... Uh, like a silk Hawaiian t-shirt. Or the, the Hawaiian shirt. So I have worn one. And in an episode. Oh, and in an episode I did wear it. But that was not mine. I think that was Matt's. That was yours, Matt. The Godzilla one says, or DH Godzilla one says, China has owned Cthulhu since ancient times. No one owns Cthulhu. Koala1203 uh, donated $5 and said, Free Hong Kong, free Macau, long live free Hong Kong slash Macau. That's good. I agree. I'm just going, going through some things. Do, 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 do. Uh, Sash Wren donated seven ninety nine Australian. Said what happened with the police online complaint forms? Oh yeah. Didn't the website go down for a while? Well, so uh, on last Friday when the protesters occupied the area around the police HQ, there was this one part where a police spokesman came out and said, "If you have any complaints." please leave and submit an online complaint form. And uh, I believe we found out that that form, like when we tried to go to it, it was down. Um, we also asked a bunch of people to send in emails. Unfortunately, I haven't heard one way or the other what happened with that. If you did submit an email to the Hong Kong police that day, let us know if you heard back from them. or Someone if says the stats there are really crazy. Is that crazy. Wrong? Like crazy good? All right. Uh... Yeah, let us know if there's some weird static or something. Oh, um, U.S. U.S. C. Bruin, two one three, uh, donated thirty Hong Kong dollars. Thank you. Did you talk about the million ad fundraiser, which raised six million Hong Kong dollars in less than twenty four hours? We did. So there's probably some new people joining us. But uh, yes, protesters wanted to raise money to get ads placed in major new international newspapers like the New York Times, the Financial Times. 
ahead of the G20. The idea being that, I guess, you know, China has said they don't want anyone talking about Hong Kong at the G20, so if they have these big ads in the newspaper, it'll kind of be like in everyone's face. So they tried to raise 300, no, they no. tried to raise three million dollars, Hong Kong dollars, and in 12 hours it was like six and a half million Hong Kong dollars. They had to shut it down because they were getting too many donations. So, they broke the system, they broke the matrix. So they are uh, starting to confirm those ads. So, um, yeah. Uh, and actually, we'll be talking about that in our next episode that we are Second doing Second to about. next episode. We'll have oh. an interview with Emily Lau, and then we'll have an episode about the G20, which is going to be awesome. Really, you should watch it. You'll Please laugh. do, because all of our episodes are getting weirdly low views and demonetized. So. Yeah, you, there, yeah. There was this recent video that came out with, like, this group, Project Veritas. Well, I mean... Allegedly, they interviewed... Well, they interviewed a guy who allegedly claims he's a Google insider and claims that they are going after conservative and some news channels, so... um, I mean, we don't know anything really about that and have not really had a chance to look into that. Yeah. So, basically, watch the show and share it. Sharing is a huge way to help the show. But we have been noticing weird things, like a lot of you have also told us about you getting unsubscribed. I got Shelly's unsubscribed. Shelly's been unsubscribed. Yes, which was a weird experience. People aren't uh, getting notifications. You're not seeing the show in the recommended videos. Yeah. So there is a weird thing going on with China Uncensored on Google. Then. Oh, Steve donated $2 and said Antarctica has been part of Ch- has been part of China since ancient... Dot, dot, dot. Ancient what? Steve, tell me. Are you okay, Steve? Did they come and get you before you could finish? I'm sure that's what happened. Oh, no. Uh, so, um... Jack Leung? Did we talk about this one? Uh, I, th- I think we did get Jack Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Overly Creative One donated $5 and said, Antarctica Uncensored, awesome. The Penguin Chronicle. Ooh, I like the sound of that. I hope you like penguins better than you like pandas. Uh, they are the same colors, so <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Uh, Finbar Conlon. Conlon? I'm so much better at names than you are, Shelly. Donated 5 euros and 49 euros. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what are foreigners in Hong Kong's response to the protests, especially Irish people? If you know, I don't know about the Irish people. Uh, there, there is a very isolated expat community that mostly, from what I've seen, likes to go to bars with other we expats. We shouldn't demean all expats. That's true. We, we have seen some amazing expats. Uh, that, like, uh, you know, probably that will work for the CIA. Yes. Uh, but actually, yes. there have been expats at the um, the protests and some of the, uh, you know, people who have been chronicling the protests have been ex- expats and stuff like that. Yeah, a guy so, named yeah. Hong Kong Hermit. Check him out on Twitter. He's he's a cool guy. He's been wearing Hawaiian shirt pretty much every day. He He's actually been hugely valuable. He'll be like at a protest site all night just doing live tweets so people kind of know what's happening. And he's, he's looking very tired these days. But uh, um, yeah, it's nice. You can sort of start to see the same people and kind of get to know them a bit more. Uh, uh, Rob Dolan donated five dollars. Thank you, and said this is also a vote for more Hawaiian shirts. Keep up the great work. Man, I wonder I would, if you can get a Hawaiian shirt in Hong Kong. I wonder. Hi. Hey. Uh, yeah, I really wish I were wearing Hawaiian shirts and perhaps no pants. I'm quite hot. Oh, hey. Eric Hopper donated fifty dollars. Thank you. Thank you. And said there's at least something to the Project Veritas thing. I don't trust them either, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that, yeah. We haven't really looked into it, so we can't really comment on whether we think it's credible or not, but yeah. yeah. Um, Ringstar donated 10,000 won. Communist out from Korea. North or south? <laughs> One's going to be harder than the other. <laughs> uh, Frog says Donald Trump will punish China. Frog, That'd be interesting. thank you, Frog. Um, Lloyd Green says, hi, guys. Hi, Lloyd. Uh, let's see, should try dual casting Twitch. They have a Hong Kong streamer that's rolling in big numbers. Yeah, uh, some people have mentioned, that was from uh, No Fun, No Hope. Man, ain't that the truth. Uh, yeah, uh, some people have suggested doing Twitch. Um, when we have some time, we should look in, 
into things like that. People have also been saying, look into bitch shoot. There's a bunch of things we need to look into, um, but we're too busy sweating. <laughs> Stacey Mount says there's a Tommy Bahama store in Wan Chai. Get Thank you. out. Thank you. Although I'm not sure we can afford a Tommy Bahama Hawaiian shirt for you. But. Five finger discount? Uh, is immoral and is not something I would do. It's not. Uh, oh, don't move. Norman, Normandy uh, Frankia. Donated $2.99 Australian. Do you like James Clavel's Noble House? Why does that sound familiar? I don't know what that is. Is that a book? I. It sounds very familiar. Um, I can't say because I don't know exactly what it is, but it sounds familiar. I'm going to look it up when we're done with this live cat. Twitch streaming requires a game tie and just FYI. Well, Chris is... Life been... is a game. <laughs> Chris has just been looking for an excuse to... Uh, do a do China Uncensored Let's Play. Yes. That's right. Although, I think also, uh, we have seen, there has been a Twitch channel that's been live streaming the protests. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the, yeah, so, that's... That's, yeah. Um, Heidi Hong uh, donated $20 Australian and said, keep up the good work, guys. Love and support from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You, uh, you know, Melbourne. while we're in the this side of the world... It's still eight hours to Sydney. Oh, my gosh. Um, I... Do you have to say that I've never been to Melbourne and really want to go next time we go to Australia? Uh, let's see. Oh, Ken Magnum. Oh, that's a cool name. Donated $19.99. Thank you. This account has been hacked. The actual user is in Beijing and would never support CU. Well, noted. Noted, yeah. I hope you get out soon, but why would you want to get out? I mean, those detention centers are so cushy and wonderful. I love China. I love the Communist Party. Uh... So somebody supports the Giant Censored Let's Play. I told you. Uh, it's going to be nothing but Breath of the Wild. I don't even know what that is. The <sighs> Legend of Zelda. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Ooh, somebody wants to know if we'd go to Portugal. Well, we do love Portuguese egg tarts. So, yes. Come to Perth. Not a bad idea. Uh, ta ta. Da 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 twitch. Fading out. Um, it, maybe you can see behind us there are people streaming out of the protest. Oh, I guess the protest is ended or going somewhere else. I wonder if that means the bad internet is going to follow them here. There's a giant line. They're all leaving the protest. I don't yes. Think it's done. All right. Should we, should we be done? Maybe we should be done. Um, yeah, so if I, final few questions, then I think we'll wrap it up for the night. I need a shower badly. Why? You're already... You know. <laughs> showering myself. <laughs> yeah. That's all sweating is. It's like a natural self-showering thing. It's nature's shower. Um, yeah. Andrew Nico Lariok asked, will we go to Taiwan? Uh, not this time. Yeah, I mean, we'll be back in Taiwan sooner or later, I'm sure. Um, but not Xu this time. Chen says, fan meetup, dinner my treat. You're going to get dinner for everyone who shows up? Let's just saying. Last time there were like sixty people. Uh, we'll see about another fan meetup. We're, we're going to be kind of busy the next couple of days, but we'll let you guys know. Uh, oh, Joe Blow donated ten dollars. Thank you. Excellent work by the China Center team. What percentage of super chat money do you actually get versus what Google keeps? Matt, I think we get all the super chat. I think. Yeah, Google doesn't keep. Google doesn't keep that. They keep a uh, majority of the ad revenue, but um, forty-five percent of ad revenue. 45% of ad revenue. Thank you, Matt. And once again, a big round of applause for Matt, who is also sweating probably more than me and has been doing insane camera work, lugging around heavy bags, getting all the shots. Pretty much everything that you see on the episode that have been coming out or have been shot by Matt. Uh, so he's, he's been really working hard and just, uh, you know, being behind the camera. So please send your love to him. Hi there, guys. TV is sending you love, Matt. Uh, Pico Potts donated five euros. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a Korean name that I cannot read because I can't read Hangul says donated 5,001 and says some other stuff that I can't read because I can't thank read Hangul. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so uh, lots of people are saying they love Matt. So you're, you're loved, Matt. Uh, USC Bruin 213 again. Donated uh, 33.33 Hong Kong dollars. Thank you. I think Hong Kong Cleaner Safer Nice version of NYC. What's your opinion? 
Uh, being a cleaner version of NYC is not difficult. <laughs> I do have to say the subways are so much nicer. Oh, the subways. They're all clean and rat-free as far as I can tell. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen single rat. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not really like New York, though, because it's kind of... There are so many, the density, the urban density here is like way more concentrated than no New York. There's no such thing as a horizon. Yeah, like we just are, like <sighs> you forget how many, it's like there are tall buildings in New York, but like not everything is in a tall building and you don't look into the distance and just see buildings behind buildings behind buildings. Yeah, so. All right, I, I think I have completely sweated through everything, so I think it's time. We wrap this up before dehydration sets in. Um, do you agree with that, Shelley? Yep, sounds good. All right. So uh, what's going to be happening in the next few days? In a couple of hours, we will have a fantastic interview with Hong Kong's Iron Lady, Emily Lau, coming out. Be sure to watch that. And again, share it with people because YouTube, they're up to something. And uh, then we have another one coming up about the G20. People are saying hi. They're very nice. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned because we're going to be continuing to upload a lot of videos and do more lives from Hong Kong. And thank you for your concern when uh, the internet wasn't working and you were all concerned for our safety. Uh, you know, yeah, we've all we're felt really a lot sorry of about that. Yeah, we just, it was really hard to get. Uh, somebody said, go get some Ferrari sweat. Uh, thank you. Good idea. Yes. Ferrari sweat's a live uh, Somebody else says, when's the live next live broadcast? We don't know. It depends on when there's going to be like some kind of crazy protest or breaking news. This has been a good way for us to kind of update you on uh, little pieces of news that really wouldn't make a full episode. Uh, Galandro Glade donated $10 Canadian and said, great work, really appreciate your content. Thank, Thank you. you. Anthony Ties uh, ah. donated a 10 Canadian and said, do you guys ever plan on having a fan meetup in Canada? Calgary, Alberta would be best. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> Never been to Canada, but I want to. Um, so, sure. Um, and uh, real quick, uh, William Lau donated a dollar and ninety nine cents. Thank you. All right, and with that, thank you guys so much for joining us on the live. We'll talk to you soon. And again, keep checking out the China Uncensored Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Shelly's Twitter. S H E L Z H A N G. Put an at at the beginning of that. People know how Twitter works. I... Cool. <laughs> you guys are smart. See you next time. Bye. Bye.